In our second World Challenge entry, we show you how this was turned into this, ended up here, and how it's creating employment in a depressed corner of the old Soviet Empire. Throughout the world, plastic from mineral water bottles and a thousand other sources are polluting land and sea. Where most of us would see an eyesore, these men, Igor Sedik and Robert Tildesley, see a business opportunity using the talents of the people who once designed weapons for the USSR. There are mountains of waste at municipal rubbish dumps and at factories, and the incinerators simply throw it out. It doesn't make economic sense to keep it, and the state doesn't care. So you need enterprises that will deal with it on another level. Enter Igor Sedik and Robert Tildesley. They're a new class of entrepreneur who see mountains of cash in mountains of trash. Our technology gives the possibility, and I stress this, to produce an excellent product from material that was considered absolutely useless. Firstly, and secondly, it gives people the chance to get a decent wage and for businessmen to invest money and very quickly get their money back and make a profit. Plastic roof tiles have been around for some time. This is a, an example of an excellent product made in the UK, but it's very expensive. Also, it's made from new plastic, which causes environmental problems in itself. Our roof tile is made from waste products that are menace to deal with. The tiles are made of a mixture of 30% waste plastic and 70% sand. Before it can be worked with, the plastic has to be melted down. But the problem is that discarded plastic can contain up to three dozen different types. Each has a different melting point. Separation is expensive and time-consuming. And the experts say you can't mix different kinds of plastic. Experts don't believe you can mix plastics. They have different temperatures for melting, they have different qualities. But we've found by examining those qualities and designing machinery that will take advantage of all the different characteristics, we can produce a good quality product from mixed plastic. But Britannica was not to be so easily put off. It assembled a team of talented ex-military engineers. Within a year, they'd cracked the problem and had produced the first machines that could mix the plastics into a solid product. A case of sword to plastic plowshare. This is how it's done. First, the wastes are separated into hard and soft. Hard plastics are fed into a machine to be diced into a workable size. Next, they're mixed with the shredded soft plastic and then they're combined. But that bit is secret. This is the machine that our engineers have designed to take the chopped up waste plastics that are in a correct mix to put them through a screw, through a heating cycle here, and they come out then as a heated mix that is the right mix for grinding and putting through the remaining part of the process. The secret is apparently varying temperature as the plastic moves along the tube. Et voila, a gunge that will one day protect a house from rain and snow. And there's a lot of that in Ukraine. Right, from this extrusion, we have what we call elephant dung. This filthy plastic has now been converted into the basic substance we need for making our roof tiles. We have to let this harden, then we grind it up into granules, and those granules can go into the next process for making our roof tile. In the second plant, the plastic is mixed with sand and colouring and melted in another heat cycle. The gunge is weighed and pressed into tile shapes which are cooled under weights. The production lines are kept busy six days a week, giving the company an annual turnover of two million dollars a year. The tiles are first going on the homes of the new rich, the good news for Britannica is that the builders prefer its tiles to all the others. It's a material that is more durable, more attractive and more beautiful. Britannica says its plastic tiles will wear longer than metal roofs and unlike the killer asbestos, pose no danger to people's lives. Clay tiles look nicer but have their drawbacks too. The tiles are like clay tiles, in that they are really strong. You can stand on them and even jump on them, and you can be sure they won't break.
It's taken a couple of years, but the recycled plastic tiles are becoming first choice. In this shop alone, they're selling up to 2,000 square metres of tile every month. That's enough to put a roof on 26 three-bedroom homes. Of course, people will ask a lot of questions. How long will this material last? What does it require? You have to demonstrate to us that this material really has a great future. With Igor acting as master salesman for the Ukraine market, Britannica is on a roll. They're confident of reaching a turnover of at least five million US dollars within three years. The fact is, new technologies have appeared. You see at Britannica, they process recyclable materials, polymers and plastics. They can make new sorts of building materials. With its small business model, Britannica appears to be inspiring other would-be entrepreneurs. We see for the future a very significant market. You're not going to have to haul roof tiles or other building products for miles across the road. You can make them in the community on a scale that is suitable for a small community. There's a building boom underway in the UK and Marley is the biggest buyer. I think it's uh, an extremely interesting concept. Um, the, the approach is novel. Um, producing roofing products from recycled plastics has been tried in the past. Uh, but blending uh, with a sand filler, as, as you know, with a standard concrete tile, is, is very much a new approach um, and something we feel is, is considerable potential. To be able to produce you know, a very attractive, durable, uh, functional product uh, from these waste streams um, is, is an extremely uh, attractive option.